Now, let us talk about hydrocarbons again. When we talk about hydrocarbons, hydrocarbons we understood can be classified into saturated and unsaturated. Now, this was entirely based on the type of bond that is present between the two carbon atoms. Now, depending upon how are these present, let's try to understand uh, something more about these hydrocarbons. Now, hydrocarbons can further be classified into aliphatic hydrocarbons. Aliphatic hydrocarbons are the ones that we have understood in the case of alkanes, alkenes and alkynes. Alkanes, alkenes, alkynes all are a part of aliphatic hydrocarbons. The other type is called as alicyclic hydrocarbons. After alicyclic hydrocarbons, we have the third which is called as the aromatic hydrocarbons. Now, when I am talking about the aliphatic hydrocarbons, aliphatic hydrocarbons can be classified into your saturated and unsaturated, which means alkanes, alkenes and alkynes. What are alicyclic ones? In the alicyclic ones, the first and the last carbon atoms are directly touching each other. For example, if I consider a case of cyclohexane, let's consider this to be my first carbon atom and this to be my last carbon atom, that is the sixth carbon atom. So, they are directly bonded to each other, hence such compounds are called as alicyclic. Whereas now, coming to the third type, which are called as aromatic hydrocarbons. Aromatic as the name suggests, has a typical aroma. But other than aroma, how do we classify them into the structures here? Now, to understand this, they have a pi bond present here. As you can see in the structure given right now, all the bonds here are the sigma bonds. Now, let's suppose the same six carbons here and these six carbons are now bonded to each other alternately by a pi bond. Now, because of this pi bond, there exists a ring-like structure and such ring-like structures are called as aromatic hydrocarbons. Now, in the beginning, we discussed something about the structure of caffeine in the coffee. The aroma that coffee has is due to caffeine and this is how caffeine looks like. At the same time now, when we are talking about aromatic hydrocarbons, how do we identify whether a given compound is aromatic or no? Now, which of the compound will be aromatic and which not? To understand that, there are certain criteria. Now, what are the criteria for aromaticity? The first rule says that there should exist a ring-like structure or a cyclic structure. For the compound that you can see right now, there exists a ring-like structure or a cyclic structure. At the same time, all the carbon atoms should be sp2 hybridized, which means it should have a planar structure. With that, there should be pi bonds, which means there should be delocalization or conjugation. And the last rule, it should obey Huckel's rule. Now, what exactly is Huckel's rule? Huckel's rule states that the number of pi electrons should be equal to 4n plus 2. Now, to understand this, and if the value of n comes out to be an integer, it is said to be an aromatic compound. Let us take a compound over here. Let us take a structure of benzene. The structure of benzene appears to be somewhere like this. Now, in this case, as you can see, there are three pi bonds. 3 pi bonds which means there are 6 pi electrons and this 6 pi electrons should be equals to 4 n plus 2 pi electrons. When I substitute the values here, the value of n comes out to be equal to 1 since it is an integer, benzene is said to be an aromatic compound. Let us take one more example here. Let us consider a case of pyrrol. Now, pyrrol appears to be somewhere like this. Now, in the case of pyrrol, if I, as I can see, there are in total two pi bonds, which means four pi electrons, plus there is a lone pair as well, which means in total, once again, we have six pi electrons. So, here in this case, I have six pi electrons, which, will, which should be equal to four n plus two. And when I substitute this, the value of n comes out to be one. And once again, which confirms that it is an aromatic compound. Let us take a third compound here, which is in the case of naphthalene. 
when I observe the structure of naphthalene, the structure of naphthalene appears to be somewhere like this. Now, in this case, as you can see, there are five pi bonds. Five pi bonds, which means in general, there are 10 pi electrons. So, this 10 should be equal to 4n plus 2 pi electrons. In this case, when I substitute the values, n comes out to be equal to 2 and once again, which confirms that it is an aromatic compound. The criteria for aromaticity is simple. It should have a planar structure. That means every carbon should be sp2 hybridized. It should have a ring-like structure or a cyclic structure and it should obey Huckel's rule. Now, all these will lead us to the aromatic compounds. Now, since you have understood what are aromatic compounds, how are they prepared and how will they react is what you will see.